Welcome to the City of Sydney, and from within its boundaries, Harold Park Paceway, who proudly present the 1988 Inter-Dominion Championship. Tonight, stand by for Round One. The great village kid winning the last Inter Dominion on Australian soil back in 1986 at the Albion Park Paceway in Brisbane. And village kid already a very firm favourite to take out this year's championship. A welcome to Harold Park Paceway in Sydney for the 47th running of the Inter Dominion Championship. A commentator this evening is David Morrow. And David, great to see the champion Village Kid in this first heat. Certainly is great to see the current champion and possibly a future champion in our maestro, the Victorian, who's aiming for 15 wins in succession. And Village Kid aiming to become only the fourth horse to win two Inner Dominions, while My Lightning Blue, also from Victoria, is also aiming for the same thing, having won the Inner Dominion at Christchurch last year. Others with big chances, Bag Limit, who won the Winfield Cup at Mooney Valley a fortnight ago, and the New Zealanders are well represented, especially in the fourth heat tonight, Luxury Liners, their big hope. The magnificent Parramatta River there in the background and right in the centre of the picture, the brilliantly lit up Harold Park venue for the 1988 Fosters Inter-Dominion Championship and we're preparing for the first heat and five of those drawn off the front line including their Gay Adam who's well in the market after a good performance in the recent Miracle Mile and also Happy Sunrise which finished second in the same race. Drawn out wide our maestro, a big chance in this opening heat. Village Kid, the 1986 champion drawn in eight and quite famous, the Cups King from Victoria, also a big hope in this opening heat. Tricky one, alas, a late scratching. Let's go, uh, go down now and find out what's happening in the betting ring. Here's Peter Longman. A tremendous crowd down here in the ring for this first seat of the Inter-Dominion Championship and there's no real surprise who the favourite is. Village Kid, very short, 6-4 to four on. Some support for our Maestro at 7-4. to four. And the only other horse really with any support, Gay Adam, has eased a little in the betting, out now to 11-1. to one. And there's number four, Gay Adam, and of course David Aitken will train, who trains and drives the horse. And this horse, only a young horse, has only had 20 starts, but certainly in the Inner Dominion with a great chance of being one of the outside runners here in a fortnight's time. And here's the horse that's going for 15 wins in a row. Our maestro ca carrying those famous night colours from Kilmore in Victoria, the yellow with the red Maltese cross and a red cap. There's been many great horses come out of that stable, but alas for the Knights, there's yet to be one that has greeted the Inter-Dominion winning post. And there's the favourite village kid. Chris Lewis, of course, is the, the driver, Billy Horn, the trainer, and his stake earnings and win ratio there just speaks for itself. The 86 Inter Dominion champion, twice winner of the Miracle Mile on this track, an out and out champion, and he's won 20 of his last 21 starts. The field's starting to move up behind the mobile barrier now for the first heat of the Foster's 1988 Inter Dominion Championship. Our Strato there with Sunset Candios, who's drawn in two. Loveridge in behind the winner, in behind the leader, I should say. Monarch's best going up. Take two. Now the horses to watch are out, out wide, our maestro, and in the middle, Gay Adam. Now who's going to win the jump? Gay Adam got away well there, number four. Going with him is Monarch's best. Off the track in the early stages, our maestro. Knight looks across. He's posted four wide in the early stages. What can he do? He keeps hunting up as the rain starts to fall again. On the inside, it's our straight over. But going to the lead on the outside, it will be Gay Adam. And Gay Adam will head them round the turn into the straight for the first time in the 88 Fosters Inter Dominion Championship. Our straight over running second. The next one caught there without cover momentarily is our maestro but Jimmy O'Sullivan taking off there in the cerise with the blue V and the green uh, sleeves and that's quite famous going up to sit on the outside of the leader. Back there behind those on the outside Sunset Candios as Monarch Vest pokes up on the inside. Back there third last in the yellow colours with the white cap as Loveridge. Uh, Village Kid is now second last but Chris Lewis is deciding to hunt up on the outside and look at the kid go and Happy Sunrise is last of all but as they go down the back and look at Village Kid go. He's gone up very quickly from second last and quickly takes over now and it's Village Kid who takes over in front and going very comfortably indeed. Leads out to Gay Adam. Caught without cover now is quite famous from our Stretto poking up on the fence there in fourth position. Our Maestro, he's going to be carted up towards the leader so he couldn't have got a better run in the end. On the inside next is Monarch's best from Sunset Candios, third last. Happy Sunrise about to go forward, three wide from the tail of the field and now back in last place is Loveridge. First quarter of the last mile carved out in 30.9 as they head down the main straight with just over 800 metres to travel in the first heat of the Inter-Dominion, 
and it's Village Kid on top, second uh, quarter in 31.3 as they pass the post, they've got a lap to go, Village Kid leads out, in second position is quite famous, Happy Sunrise, three wide, on the inside with nowhere to go at the moment, Gay Adam, Isle Maestro all bundled up there, he can't get out of that pocket, back on the inside then is uh, Al Stretto behind those off the track, three and four wide, Loveridge followed by then Sunset Candios, and last of all as they head down the back the last time, Monarch's best, in front Village Kid and he's stacking them up, off the track, three and four deep, Happy Sunrise under pressure, quite famous starting to drop back through the field, this will give Gay Adam a chance to get off the rails, Loveridge going around them, Al Maestro almost being taken back the last, but he's out now, good enough, Al Stretto picking up on the fence, Sunset Candios, four and five deep, and last of all is Monarch's best, third quarter, 29.6, but around the turn, and in front at Village Kid, Gay Adam's the only danger, is there a danger, Village Kid on the inside, Gay Adam uh, throwing down the gauntlet on the outside, Village Kid, Gay Adam, Village Kid, Gay Adam, Village Kid, he's going to be too good for them, Village Kid beat Gay Adam, Al Stretto's got third from Al Maestro, the next one, Monarch's best from Loveridge, behind those, perhaps uh, quite famous in front of Happy Sunrise and Sunset Candios, and Village Kid, he toyed with the opposition, last quarter 29.2, overall mile rate 158.6, and Chris Lewis and Bill Horn have taken the first heat of the 1988 Foster's Inter-Dominion Championship, a very impressive victory. And around the turn, and look at that, uh, Chris Lewis sitting there very quietly indeed there in the blue and the yellow stripes and that blue and white cap on uh, Village Kid. On the outside, Gay Adam momentarily looked a threat, but David Aiken was hard at work on Gay Adam, and in the last 50 metres or so, you can see Village Kid almost eased down on the line to win his 21st race from his last 22 starts, but a good run by the young New South Wales horse to take second. And there we are, eight Village Kid, the winner from Western Australia, trained by... Billy Horn, driven by Chris Lewis. Second, number four, Gay Adam, trained and driven in New South Wales by David Aiken. And third, number one, Al Stretto, trained and driven down on the south coast of New South Wales by Brian Hancock. Well, the winning driver of Village Kid, Chris Lewis, is no stranger to the microphone, and he's speaking with Peter Longman. Well, Chris Lewis, the kid, seemed to do it pretty easily. Went very nice. Very pleased with his run tonight. Were your tactics to move, make you move at that stage? I went in there with an open mind and uh, we just had to wait and see how the race panned out. Um, when the uh, pace slackened and I just shifted him around quickly and uh, he was able to take up the lead pretty comfortably. A bit of rain round tonight, any effect on the track? L uh, well it's good at this stage if there's no further rain, I think everyone will be pretty happy with it. And so do the starters in the second heat and plenty of speed off the front line. Corfew, the Victorian drawn in two, Kyala Fling from New South Wales drawn four and the Queenslander Bryden Duke who has plenty of early speed drawn in five and it really will be a battle royale going into that first turn. Off the second line, the 1987 Inter-Dominion champion, the first time we'll see him tonight, My Lightning Blue drawn in nine, the South Australian Whirly Dream who started in the Miracle Mile in eight and Gaelic Skipper, a relatively unknown New Zealander but we'll have plenty to watch for in heat two. Well, plenty of support in the ring in the second heat for the defending champion, My Lightning Blue. At the moment, around 13 to 8 has been 7 to 4, 5 to 4. Also, some good support for Michael Ilsley's uh, horse, Kayla Fling, at 9 to 4. And in the ring as well, Lesay and Whirly Dream, both at 7s. Some strong support for those horses as well. So Michael Ilsley just getting off one of those favoured runners there. Kyala Fling gets out with a wing on every foot and I dare say it will be really one of those leaders going into that first turn. Michael Ilsley, who last year drove Paleface Bubble to second in the Inter-Dominion Championship. From South Australia, we're representative here tonight is Whirly Dream, Lance Justice, the trainer and driver. And of course, Whirly Dream was here not all that long ago in the Miracle Mile, a horse who's had a lot of starts, he's had a lot of wins, he's a little bit underrated at times, but on his night, he can be as good as anyone. And again, we see those cerise colours with the blue V, the green sleeves and the white cap. Last year, they were carried to victory in the Inter-Dominion Championship and by this very horse, My Lightning Blue, his favourite for the second heat. Let's go and see how he went. So they're starting to move up behind the mobile barrier now for heat two of the Fosters Inter-Dominion here at Harold Park. Lesai on the inside. Barwin Bill goes up. Corfu's uh, back a little bit in the red with the black and white checks. Kyla Fling back a bit and so too is Bryden Duke. Outside of the front here, Arden Meadow. So they're about to go in the second heat. 
Kyla Fling normally gets out very quickly. Let's see what happens tonight. Corfu got away well there in two. Lessai going well from the inside and Kyla Fling three wide as they go into the first turn and Bryden Duke has caught four wide. Oh, going into a gallop as Lessai which has caused a little bit of confusion back in the field and going to the lead and taking over as the Victorian Corfu leads out to Kyla Fling. Bryden Duke, the Queenslander, goes up on the outside without cover and he looks pretty keen to take on the leaders. Whirly Dream got away well off the second row and is moving forward, getting onto his back as Lessai. Down on the inside then is Gaelic Skipper, the New Zealander from Barwon Bill, who's back there fourth last. On the inside behind those then is the Western Australian Arden Meadow. On the outside, My Lightning Blue, the Victorian, and Robert John last of all, and Jimmy O'Sullivan is taking off from second last on My Lightning Blue as they go to the back with 1,400 metres to travel. Bryden Duke trying to slow them down in front. He doesn't realise that there's a big danger looming up around the outside, three wide. Corfu's on the inside running second, but for not for long. There goes My Lightning Blue. He's tough and he's hard. And Jimmy O'Sullivan quite content to go up there and sit without cover. Third now is Corfu. 1-1 the South Australian Whirly Dream followed by Kyla Fling. He's been shuffled back on the fence and awkwardly positioned there running fifth on the fence. Less eye behind those. Gaelic Skipper is back there. Fourth last on the inside. On the outside there. Third last Barwin Bill. In those check colours there. The purple and white checks back. Second last is Arden Meadow and Robert John last of all. First quarter of the last mile in 30.9 as they come down the main straight and hear the bell with just over a lap to go. And the second quarter has been carved out in 31.2 as they pass the winning post. Bright and Duke in front to my lightning blue. Corfu running third on the fence from Whirly Dream as Lessai takes off to go forward three wide. Down on the fence, Kyala Fling still awkwardly positioned. Robert John going forward from Barwin Bill. Gaelic Skipper and last of all is Arden Meadow. Down the back the last time. Inside 500 metres to travel in the second heat of the Fosters into Dominion. And my lightning blue getting closer to Bright and Duke on the outside. In fact, my lightning blue's poked his head in front as they go past the 429.8 this at the third quarter and it's my lightning blue on front in front Bryden Duke has called it a day on the inside and starting to come home reasonably well behind those as Whirly Dream he could be the danger Corfu bailed up without uh, anywhere to go at the moment behind those Kyle are fling under a bit of pressure with Robert John Gaelic Skipper and Barwin Bill around the turn and it's my lightning blue in front here comes Whirly Dream my lightning blue Whirly Dream Whirly Dream on the outside my lightning blue the inside is finding plenty my lightning blue Whirly Dream I'd say my lightning Lightning Blue has lasted. He's won it a lip the whirly dream. Third, perhaps, Kyla Fling in front of the very fast finishing Gaelic skipper from Robert John. Behind those, Barwin Bill, Bryden Duke. Behind those, then Corfu, second last, Arden Meadow, unless I stop badly to finish last. Well, what a tremendous performance here. My Lightning Blue, he pulled out everything. And this is the way this horse, he showed a lot of courage and determination to win last year in Christchurch. And I feel that he's found just that little bit too much for the South Australian here. Lance Justice on the outside with Whirly Dream. On the inside, it's Jimmy O'Sullivan and My Lightning Blue. And look at them, they go to the line. A stride from home, I think that Whirly Dream might have had it. But right on the wire, the one on the inside, but it's a treacherous angle here at Harold Park. Now that uh, particular freeze there is right on the winning post. You'd probably go for the outside horse. And that's exactly what happened. The outside horse got there by a nose. Whirly Dream, trained and driven by Lance Justice in South Australia. Number nine, My Lightning Blue second, trained and driven by Jimmy O'Sullivan in Victoria. And third, number four, Kyala Fling, trained and driven by Michael Ilsley in New South Wales. Heat three of the Inter-Dominion Pacing Championship and a lot of interest here in number three, Thorate, going for eight wins in succession. And of course, number six, Pale Face Bubble, who was the runner-up in Christchurch in 1987. Off the second row, and all the interest centres on number seven, Bag Limit, who brilliantly won the Victorian Winfield Cup a fortnight ago. And number eight from Western Australia, JB's Fella. That about the favourite in the third heat, Thorate, at 11 to 8. Also been quoted at 10 to 1 for the Inter-Dominion Grand Final. Also on the betting, Bag Limit at 5 to 2, JB's Fella at 7 to 2, and easing in the betting, last year's second place getter in the Inter-Dominion Final, Pale Face Bubble at the moment at 14 to 1. The horse is moving up behind the gate now for a start in this, the third heat of the Inter-Dominion Championship, and Thorate, who's been into the red on a few occasions on the New South Wales TAB will start an even money favourite in this number three he's going for eight wins in a row his main danger is drawn the inside of the second row bag limit and those famous yellow red Maltese crust and yellow cup colours of Vin Knight and on its outside the purple and white checks with a purple cap of JB's fella 
Away they go in the third heat of the Fosters Inter Dominion Championship and Speed Partner went into a gallop shortly after the start and Thor Raider's gone straight to the lead. Sunshine Forever, a long outsider, has moved up on the outside to apply the early pressure. Going right back through the field, Speed Partner, Margaret Frost has got it settled down now, but it's back fifth. On the inside, running third in the early stages of this race is Bromsky Beat. Up on the outside is my John Paul. JB's fella got away pretty quickly and that's it in the purple and white colours moving up on the outside and on its back is Pale Face Bubble. Back third last at the moment bag limit followed then by the two Queenslanders Henry Luca and also back there is Hyperstat passing the winning post with two laps to go and bag limits taking off from the tail of the field as Hancock tries to slow them up a fraction in front on Thor 8 here comes bag limit ranging up on the outside of them three wide now what's Hancock going to do here on Thor 8 as they go down the back straight inside 1400 metres to travel bag limit wants to hang there going into a gallop of sunshine forever he cramped up Bronsky beat on the inside going around them and now moving into third as my John Paul always caused all sorts of problems there. Uh, sunshine forever as they go along the back straight inside 1,200 metres to go and Hancock's quite content to let Knight go to the lead on Bag Limit. Bag Limit takes over now. Thorate running second in this race that really has been mixed up by a couple of horses which broke. Moving to third, my John Paul from Bronsky beat the next one, Speed Partner, which broke early in the race and is now running fifth behind those JB's fella and also Popo's bubble. Up on the inside then goes Henry Luca. Moving now on the inside now to second last is Sunshine forever and last of all is Hyperstat as they come down to the post with a lap to go. First quarter 30.8, second quarter 31.5 and out of the straight they go and approach the 600 metre mark and it's bag limit on top to Thor Raid. My John Paul, he was unwanted in the betting but he's running a big race, running third without cover. Down on the inside is Bronsky beat speed partner about to fail off from then JB's fella. Behind those then on the inside Henry Luca back and then behind those is Pale Face Bubble. Sunshine forever second last and Hyperstat is last of all as they go past the 400. Third quarter in 30.2 and on the inside there it's uh, Thorate running second behind Bag Limit and he can't get out of that pocket at the moment. My John Paul on the outside is running a very big race at big odds from back in the field. Here comes JB's fellow with speed partner and also Pile Face Bubble from a mile back. Around the turn Bag Limit in front. Thorate crawling all over them but can't get out and here's JB's fellow right down the outside. He'll beat them all. JB's fellow race for the lead in the shadows of the post and JB's fellow wins heat three. Second Bag Limit third Thor 8, no luck behind by John Paul. Then behind those, the next one would have been Hyperstat from Bronsky Beat Speed Partner. Sunshine Forever, second last was Pale Face Bubble. It was a short-lived run. And the last one to cross the line, Henry Luca. A great performance by the Western Australian JB's fella. And look at him, Greg Harper pulls him out four and five deep. As Vin Knight goes for the persuader on bag limit, but it's the one in the purple and white colours down the outside, which quickly ranged up on the outside. He wasn't at his best when he was here for the Miracle Mile towards the end of last year, and look at him go to the line. A great performance by JB's fella. And he's too good in the end for bag limit. And Thor 8, which had no luck, but even when he did get out, he didn't grain all that much ground on bag limit in the run to the line. So across the line, 8, 7 and 3. JB's fella first, trained and driven by Greg Harper in Western Australia. Second, number 7, bag limit, trained by Bob Knight at Kilmore and driven by Son Vin. And third, number 3, Thor 8, trained and driven in New South Wales by Brian Hancock. And the lights of Sydney are ablaze and certainly ablaze here at Harold Park as we look at the heat four runners and here most of the interest in the front line around number five Palomar, the brilliant Western Australian who's performed so creditably at Gloucester Park in recent weeks. But all of the interest really is between eight and nine. Rufus Youngblood, the Victorian who won four derbies last year and the New Zealander luxury liner, fifth in the grand final at Addington in Christchurch in 1987 and a recent good second behind bag limit in the Winfield Cup at Mooney Valley. Well, plenty of action down here in the ring for this final heat of this evening. In a very open betting race. At the moment, the New Zealander luxury liner, probably just a slight favourite at 9 to 4. Then Palomar, second favourite, 11 to 4. And Rufus Youngblood at 7 to 2. Also good support though for Tiff's Mystery at 6 to 1. But a very open betting race in this final heat. And there's one of these featured runners in the final heat of the first night of the Inter-Dominion, Rufus Youngblood, the winner of four derbies in Australia during 1987. The white with that rather strange looking symbol, the triangle on his back, and Dickie Lee there, the trainer driver. And the other big hope in this, the fourth heat of the Inter-Dominion on the first night, is Luxury Liner, trained by Ronnie Purden, and of course be driven by the top New Zealand driver, Tony Hurleyhee. And Luxury Liner is uh, really a big hope of winning the Inter-Dominion Grand Final. Prince Paladin to move up into gate two, owned by two fairly prominent Western Australians. 
ABC Sports commentator George Griljusic and Laurie Connell. He's in two. Talara Dream moves up to three. Tiff's Mystery in four. Palomar in those red and white checks has drawn five. With Corralda Gift out in six. Young Pride in behind the pole marker, number seven. Rufus Youngblood going up with Luxury Liner and Spear Bow. Won't be long and we'll see a start in heat four. 1960 metres the journey and away they go and Palomar got out pretty well out wide but also hunting up in the early stages of Talara Dream and going with Talara Dream is Tiff's Mystery and the three of them cross to have a little battle as they come round towards the turn into the straight the first time it's Talara Dream on the outside in the centre and still hunting up as Tiff's Mystery and Palomar caught three and four deep on the turn into the straight the first time and he wants to be uh, continuing on with his charge Bryden Duke is going pretty well in behind should say Rum Bryden in behind the leader is uh, moved to third and behind those then is Pence Paladin followed back in the field by Rufus Youngblood they're going very hard in front behind those then Young Pride followed by Corralda Gift the next one Luxury Liner and Spare Bowers last of all as they go to the back oh a couple got a real bad check there Rufus Youngblood's got the worst of it and he's gone into a bad gallop and uh, I think he might have even broken a bit of gear as he's had to be settled down and has to start all over again and that's real bad luck for Dickie Lee it'll take a superhuman performance just about or equine performance from Rufus Young blood to do any good from there after he suffered that bad check and it's Talara Dream on top leads out to Palomar on the outside who's had a torrid run behind those them run Bryden running third and in the one one and going well tips mystery the next one young pride and starting a move from back in the field now luxury liner going forward between runners Prince Paladin followed up behind those by spear bow who's three wide but back with the last group in behind those Corral a gift and hunting up on the fence now is Rufus young blood as they go past now towards the winning post with just over a lap to go 29-5 the first quarter 33.1 that second quarter and it's luxury liner who's moved alongside Talara dream to apply the pressure behind those Palomar who's doing a pretty good job considering the first lap that he had on the inside it's rum Bryden spare bow going up three wide but he's been three wide for a lap between runners and being shuffled back tips mystery followed on the fence by young pride going up behind those then is Prince Paladin up on the fence goes Rufus young blood who's done a pretty good job considering how much ground he lost and last of all is corral the gift but Passing the 400, third quarter 29.8 and going to the lead now is Luxury Liner. He leads out to Spare Bow who's had a pretty torrid run. Calling a day now is Talara Dream. Here comes Tips Mystery who could be a real big danger. Palomar they're back on the inside. His run's gone. Young Pride getting into the clear and so too Prince Paladin. Halfway down the straight though and Luxury Liner's going to come away and win this fourth heat pretty comfortably. Luxury Liner being well held together and Luxury Liner's going to win it well. Spare Bow second. Running third then was a Tiff's Mystery, Young Pride next, followed by Corralda Gift. The next one to finish, Talara Dream, Rufus Youngblood, who really did uh, uh, miss out on any winning chance when he got that bag check. Prince Paladin third last, Palomar second last, and the last one to cross the line, Rum Bryden. Luxury liner. Well, the, after, after the time, uh, he went up around the outside and took over the running. Tony Hurler, he was in no danger whatsoever of doing anything but coming away and winning this race. And haven't we seen some impressive performers? But I don't think anyone could say anything was more impressive than Luxury Liner, who won that very well from Spare Bow and Tiff's Mystery. So Luxury Liner, my word, he was impressive. So that brings to a close our coverage of the first night of the Inter-Dominion Heats. Some very impressive performances, especially from the New Zealander Luxury Liner and also the former champion Village Kid. Next round of Heats on next Tuesday. Don't forget to join us around Australia at 10.45 for coverage on ABC Television. Until then, it's good night from ABC Sport.